aliens, monsters, and the supernatural. A true story of a terrorized life. You are now listening to Mac and Creeps. No need to adjust your volume. We will do it for you. You are listening to Mac and Creeps, and we are continuing where the last story left off. I believe whatever was in the closet that night will remain a mystery, at least in this life. As for the transparent humanoids that seem to be holding the closet door from opening, I would see them for the next few years, day or night. A room full of people, or me all alone. At any time I felt curious about the invisible mannequins, all I had to do was focus a moment, and soon they would come into focus. It could be one or two, or a whole gang of them. Some were tall, almost reaching the ceilings, and some were just a few feet in height. They carried around little devices, They were always typing on. Keep in mind, cell phones were not a thing yet. And nothing with a touch screen had been thought of, as far as I know. My early drawings of these entities had them holding calculators. People would ask me what these devices were. My answer was always the truth. I have no idea what the devices are but they always have them. Looking back now, I can see how they resemble a small touchscreen device. But obviously back then, that was something unheard of. The only recognition I have ever had of the transparent entities came a few years ago, while I was listening to a pre-recorded broadcast of the Hagman and Hagman Report. Tom Horn a possibly self-proclaimed expert on conspiracy theories, angels, demons, aliens, and the list goes on, was on this broadcast telling a story about his 90-year-old mother. He explains how her doctor administered an experimental eye treatment on one of her eyes. For the next nine days following her treatment, she explains seeing entities that sounded like my transparent entities. She explains how there are several of these beings everywhere. She talked about how they were very surprised she could see them. She said they are very interested in everything in our world. You must understand that this was exhilarating for me to have my visions of these entities told through someone else was a sort of validation. If you are interested in Tom Horn's story upon writing this book, it can be found on YouTube under the title Creepy Creatures in Your House and CERN. Just a small disclaimer, I do not endorse anything that is said on the video and I am not affiliated in any way with the broadcast or people that I mentioned. Tom Horn said he brought up the story because he was curious if anyone else ever experienced something like it. I think that his story and mine complement each other. That is all. These invisible entities examined every little thing they seen, from a flower pot to a fork on the counter. They seemed fascinated with every object. As they looked an object over, they would be putting in some type of data on their devices. These little devices look like calculators with no buttons. But looking back now, they look like a typical tablet or smartphone. The size of the devices differed in the size of the entity. Each device was suited for the size of its user. These entities were not tangible as far as I could tell. 
They could pass through walls and large objects. They could also stand on a table or floor without falling through. It was clear their laws of physics were complex. There were so many of these entities around at any given time. If one could not pass through them, it would have caused problems. I remember once attempting to let the beings know that I could see them. It would be the first and last time as I became frightened quickly. The family recently moved up the street from the two-bedroom apartment. We are now living in a two-story, three-bedroom apartment. I am downstairs alone, and my mother is upstairs. I am bored at the moment, so I decide to focus in on the transparent entities. It's always entertaining to watch these beings. I always wonder what or who they are. I picture them being tourists from some distant universe, amazed by the way humans live. I am on the couch. I just finished watching a movie. As the credits are rolling up the screen of the television, I focus on an entity next to the TV stand. The entity stares at the TV for a moment and looks back down at its device. It holds the device in one hand and types on it with the other. After a couple of times going back and forth between the TV and its device, the entity makes its way out of the living room and into the kitchen. I wonder how they would act if they knew I could see them. I decide to get up and follow the being I had just been watching. I start by simply following its movements around our kitchen. The being doesn't notice my head rotating and my eyes following it. So I approach it. It was roughly the same height as me, probably four foot five inches. The being was examining a jar full of cooking utensils. I put my face in front of the entity's face. My intentions are to block its view. When it looks back up from its tablet, the entity's only reaction is to look around my head at the object. It seems oblivious to what I am doing. I move my head with its head. After mirroring its movements a few times, the entity realizes that I can see it. The entity's reaction seems to be one of surprise. It looks down at its tablet and frantically types. It looks back up at me. I cannot see any facial features, just a head that appears mannequin in nature. I can make out all of its body movements. Their emotions show through their movements. That is another human aspect of these entities, besides being humanoid. They do appear to have a type of human emotion. After a moment of staring at one another, I realized the entity has used the device to draw a crowd. All of the beings in the kitchen turn towards me. The kitchen fills with entities of all sizes. Some entities come in from the apartment next door by simply walking through the walls. Others come from upstairs and the living room. I am not scared beyond my senses, but I am feeling very frightened. I see the room of blank faces staring at me. The handful of entities closest to me are looking me over thoroughly. I watch their necks crane as they move their heads around me. So far, not a single entity has acknowledged another one. It seems like they only communicate through the devices. I start to become very uncomfortable with these things studying me. I go to the cupboard and start looking for a snack, hoping they will think they made a mistake and leave me alone. Usually as I walk, I go through these beans, but now they are moving out of my way. As I walk to the cupboard, a gap in the crowd opens, allowing me to pass through. These beings 
are now putting their faces in front of mine. I am still pretending not to see them. I grab some chips and make my way back to the living room. I notice that most of the beans are starting to leave. I find a movie to watch on HBO and sit down on the couch. For the next hour, three of the entities take turns trying to get my attention. They wave their arms in front of me. They try to make sudden movements to see if I'll look. The whole time, they are trying to get my attention. There is always one being leaned over beside me, staring at my eyes, watching to see if my eyes look at their distractions. After I do my absolute best at ignoring them, they finally leave me alone and go back to their data entries. I feel relieved. I decide to never test these entities again. Some could say that these entities were a figment of my imagination. I have no evidence to back up my claims of the invisible entities. I know I seen them all the way up until I was maybe 15. I know the devices I seen in their hands were unlike anything I had ever seen at the time. I also know that my life has been filled with supernatural phenomena. So to believe these entities were really there is not a far stretch to me. I cannot say that they are not around us anymore. I just know eventually I cannot see them anymore. Perhaps the story of Tom Horn's mother gives validation that these beings are still around us. I do often think about the entities along with the other mysteries of my life. I do have a lot of unexplainable events that I can recall, but I am grateful that the biggest phenomenon in my life is no longer a mystery. I do know what the aliens want, and I know why they are here. But as I have said before, I must take you on the entire journey before I can explain that. I truly believe without all the information, one cannot properly discern the motives of the extraterrestrials. The next few chapters will be very revealing of the alien species. It will also reveal that the typical gray alien is not the only alien species there is. In my personal experience, I can say that the little greys are the least frightening. Perhaps that's why they are the most popular nowadays. For whatever reason, I cannot say for sure, but it really does surprise me that there are not many stories about the brown aliens. Maybe people block out the brown alien experiences and choose only to remember the greys. I can say remembering the Browns is very frightening. It is not only their eyes that scares the crap out of you, but their entire features seem completely evil in nature. They almost have hatred written on their face. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to Mac and Creeps. I just wanted to add a little commentary here in case uh, Tom Horn ever listens to this uh, part of my story here because uh, he he asked in the question, you know, uh, when he was being interviewed, he asked uh, the audience and on the Hagman and Hagman show, he, he said, I'm going to tell this story because I'm curious if anyone else has ever experienced this or anything. So... Uh, Tom Horn, if you're listening, uh, your your mother's experience there was uh, very validating for me and exhilarating. I, I was so grateful to hear that someone else had seen the same people that I, I seen for years. I've seen these things for years, uh, three, four years. But uh, there, there's your answer. That I believe your story about your mother uh, and her her uh, eye drop situation. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to add that for, and just in case Tom Horn ever listens, yes, I've experienced pretty much what you 
told your story about. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to Mac and Creeps. We will read the next chapter in the next video. Thank you for listening.